Hello, welcome to chapter 2, homework questions 74 through 78. Question 74, review how to multiply binomials by reading the math notes box for this lesson. Then rewrite each of the expressions below by multiplying binomials um, and simplifying the resulting expression. Alright, so I'm going to show you a couple different ways uh, that, that we've worked through these before. One is to use the area model and to rewrite 4x plus 1 as a side length, 4x and then 1. So if you add that up, that would represent this length of the rectangle. And then the other side would be this length, and so we'll rewrite that side as 2x and then negative 7 or minus 7. And then what we can do is we can find the area of each individual rectangle and then combine them together. So 4x times 2x is 8x squared. 2x times 1 is 2x. 4x times negative 7, negative 28x, and 1 times negative 7 is negative 7. And then we can combine our like terms, and that will leave us with 8x squared. And these two boxes here have a common term. So we'll add those together, and that'll be negative 26x, and then your minus 7. And so you can always use the area model to answer any of these binomial times binomial questions, or really any polynomial times another polynomial. Another way that maybe had been talked at some point is maybe a little shortcut to that, is that what you'll notice is that we're taking this first term and multiplying it to the two terms on the other side of the box. So for example on A you have 4x being multiplied by 2x and then 4x being multiplied by negative 7. And so we can do the same thing here and this will give us 10x squared and then the 5x also gets multiplied to the um, other part of that side of the box which would be positive 7. So 7 times 5x is plus 35x. And then you'll notice that then the 1 is also distributed to both sides of that as well. So for example, on this one, the negative 2 times 2x would be negative 4x, and then the negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. So it's done without the box, but you still get the same four terms, and you still need to simplify. So it'd be 10x squared plus 31x minus 14. So once again, either method is perfectly fine. It's just a matter of preference. I'll use the area model again. So for this one, we have 4x minus 3 and x minus 11. 4x times x is 4x squared. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. 4x times negative 11 is negative 44x. And negative 3 times negative 11 is a positive 33. Just make sure in the area model that you don't just stop. You do have to write the final answer. So this would be 4x squared minus 47x plus 33. And then for part D, I'll use uh, without the area model. So negative 3x times 2x is negative 6x squared. Negative 3 times negative 5, make sure you see it as a negative times a negative, uh, is positive 15x. 1 times 2x is 2x. And then 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. Combine your like terms, 6x squared plus 17, or sorry, negative 6x squared plus 17x minus 5. Question 75. The shaded triangle below is surrounded by a rectangle. Find the area of the triangle. So we know that if we look at uh, the area for the triangle, we learned that the area is equal to the base times height and divided by 2. So what is the base of the triangle? The base is 7. The height of the triangle is this part right here, and that's 8, and then divide it by 2. So 56 divided by 2 is equal to 28. Remember, we have to have units, so it has 28. Um, you can see the marking right here. This represents feet, so 28 square feet or feet squared represents the area of that triangle. Question 76. For each diagram below, solve for x. Explain what relationship or relationships from your angle relationship toolkit you used for each problem. So we'll go ahead and start on part A. We recognize that there is a right angle form, which means it is complementary to each other. So we got 6x plus 4x plus 10 degrees is equal to 90 degrees since it forms a right angle. That'll give us 10x is equal to subtract the 10. 
um, to get 80 degrees, then divide by 10, and x is equal to 8 degrees. And we were able to find that because a right angle is 90 degrees. Um, also, you could put in there that they are complementary. Part B, we have a straight angle, uh, forms a line, so we know that straight angles are supplementary. So we have 5x plus 13 degrees plus 3x plus 7 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. Combine your like terms, you get 8x plus 20 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. Subtract 20 degrees and you get 160 degrees and then divide by 8 and you get x equals 20 degrees. And once again, we knew that because of it being a straight angle. All right, on to part C. Uh, we have the triangle given with three angle measures in terms of x. We know the um, angle sum theorem. Triangle angle sum theorem means that it adds up to 180. So we'll just go ahead and set that up with all three angles being added together. 2x plus 18 degrees plus 2x plus 17 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. Combine your like terms, that's 7x. And then you have 18 and 17. 35 plus 5 would be 40 degrees. Subtract 40 degrees to get 140 degrees. Divide by 7. And x is equal to 20 degrees. And once again, we knew that because of the triangle angle sum theorem. And then last, part D. Um, we could use the triangle angle sum theorem again because we have a triangle. We do know this measure right here is 90 degrees because it is a right angle. We could also say that x plus 30 degrees is equal to 90 degrees because we know it's um, we know it has to be what's left over from the 180. It's complementary. And then we can just subtract 30 and get x is equal to 60 degrees. But we're still kind of using the, the triangle angle sum theorem to, to figure that out though. So triangle angle sum theorem. Question 77. Daniel and Mike were having an argument about where to place a square in the Venn diagram below. Daniel wants to put the square in the intersection of the two, sorry, in the intersection, uh, the region where the two circles overlap. Mike doesn't think that's right. I think it should go in the right region because it is a square, not a rectangle. But a square is a rectangle, protested Daniel. Who is right? Explain your thinking. So once again, just make sure we have the names correct here. Uh, Daniel wants to put the square in the intersection. So right here, this is where Daniel wants to put it. And then Mike doesn't think so. Mike thinks it goes over here um, where it has two pairs of parallel sides but is not a rectangle. And so what do we know? Well, um, is a square a rectangle? Does it have two sets of parallel sides? We definitely know it has two sets of parallel sides, but does it also represent a rectangle? And who's correct? Daniel is, because the definition of a rectangle is a quadrilateral with four right angles. Since a square has four right angles, or four sides and four right angles, it must be a rectangle. So it is a rectangle. Daniel is the one that is correct on this. Uh, once again, because a rectangle is a quadrilateral with four right angles and a square has four right angles. Question 78. Flo thinks she will be able to increase sales if she makes a big show of flipping pancakes at her diner. But flipping pancakes high in the air takes a lot of practice. Part A, after flipping 35 pancakes, only 22 landed correctly on the grill. What is the probability, expressed in a percent, of flow correctly flipping pancakes? So on part A, if she flips 22 of them correctly out of 35, then we can figure out what the percent is by dividing those two. And so when you divide, you get approximately 63%. Okay, so Flo will correctly flip about 63% of the pancakes correctly. 
Part B, Flo needs 42 pancakes for a large, uh, hungry group that just arrived. How many pancakes should she attempt to flip so that 42 um, flip correctly? Well, we know that 22 out of 35 is what she is currently at. If she wants to flip 42 correctly, then how many will she need to flip? So I did 22 pancakes correctly over a total of 35 is equal to 42 pancakes correctly over what amount? And then we can solve this by multiplying by 35x to both sides. And that would cancel the 35 on the left, but then put the x there. On the right, the x cancels, and then you're going to get 42 times 35. And then you can take that answer and divide by 22. And x will be about 67 pancakes. All right, on to part C. A customer orders a side of Flo's grab bag of flapjacks, in which a customer gets one randomly chosen pancake. Flo has prepared a pan of 12 sourdough pancakes and 15 buttermilk pancakes. How many banana pancakes should Flo add to the pan if she wants the probability of randomly grabbing one, bana uh, one banana pancake to be one out of ten? So I'm sure there's lots of different ways to look at this. The way I'm kind of at least thinking right now is that 1 out of 10 means you need to have one banana pancake for every 10 total. Well, right now we have a total of 27 already made. So if I do 1 out of 10, then to go up I would have to do 2 out of 20, which still is less than what I currently have. And then the next one would have to be 3 out of 30. So right now we have 12 and 15 buttermilk pancakes, which makes 27 so to get to the 30, I would have to add three more pancakes, and I'd also need three bananas. So it looks like if I add three banana, that would put me up at a total of 30, and that would give me the probability of three out of 30, which is the same as one out of 10. Um, so how many banana pancakes should be added? Three banana pancakes will need to be added. And then that should answer the question. And once again, 3 out of 30 will reduce to 110. 1 out of 10. 